Hello, Gary Simon of designcourse.com. Today is January 25th, with our 25th video of the year, and we're going to continue on with our iPhone breathalyzer by creating a few renders in Blender, and then we're going to take those into Photoshop and design a uh, user interface uh, that's going to be animated in After Effects. So as always, visit designcourse.com, see what's going on there, and also subscribe here on YouTube. And of course, the project files are available for free in the description below this video. All right, let's get started. All right, so this was the last view uh, from yesterday. Uh, I want to make some adjustments real quick. So we're going to separate the top of this from this bottom. So what we'll do is go to Solid, hit 5 to go back into Orthographic Mode, and we'll hit 1 to get a side view. And we will select this object, hit Tab to go into Edit Mode. We can see there's kind of like a slight, you know, like a bevel up here. We don't select those ones. So we're going to hit B. Hit A, well, hit A first, make sure nothing's selected, hit B, and just right up there, we'll select those. And then we'll go ahead and hit P to separate that. So now that, if we go back here, is its own object. Right here, okay? Now what we want to do is select this portion. We're going to cl click this little plus sign to create a new material. We're going to change it from mix shader right down to there. Let's go into render to see how this looks. Now it has more texture. It looks better in my opinion. So we'll right click the top portion and we can just make that a little bit darker. We'll come around here. Now this one, I remember it was separated. It kind of looks cool, but no. we'll make sure it has the same material. So if we select this and then over here, Click on this down. I think it was our last one that we created. Now that is the correct color. Now I want to make an adjustment here to, um, you know, what we have going on for roughness. We can turn that up a bit. Okay, and. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now that we're going to consider this uh, basically ready to go uh, for renders. So to get your rendering ready, I'm going to hit 5 here. We want to set up our camera. So hit 0 on your number pad and go to View, Properties, Lock Camera to View. That's something I do every single time. I learned that from a different dude uh, through tutorials. And now we can basically position what we want in view or how we want it to be viewed. Um, let me zoom up here. I'm going to hit zero to get back into pers user perspective mode. I'm going to right click on these two, go to solid, pull them up and kind of out of the way. All right, so we'll hit zero to go back to our view and hit rendered. And I'm going to leave it right there. All right, so now we're going to go uh, to the render panel, and I want to select, I'm going to change a couple things here. For 1920 by 1080, we're going to leave that there, but change 50 to, all the way to 100. Basically what that means is if you left that at 1920 by 1080, it would only do 50% of that resolution. So you want it to go 100. And let me come down here. For render, I'm going to choose 1200, and I think everything else is good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that. Ah, wait, I forgot about something. I want to click on this object. Let's make sure it's selected. OK, go back to rendered. And I'm going to go back to the, our object modifier. For the subdivisions, I want to turn this up to 4. Well, maybe not the view. We don't need that. But for the render, we want it to be 4. OK, so I'm going to click on render. And this will take a little, oh no. I wanted to change the uh, tile size. So to do that, I'm going to hit Escape twice. Down here under Performance, I'm going to change this to 256. And this works well if you have a GP, uh, if you're processing with a graphics card. So, All right, so now it's going to change this tile size to be bigger. So I'm going to pause this until it's done. 
Okay, so now that it's rendered, I'm gonna going to hit F3. And I'm gonna save this as phone perspective view jpg and you can set the uh, file types down here 100% save and once that saves hard drives being slow all right so now I want to get out the next view hit escape and we're gonna do a side view so I'm gonna hit uh, let's see three is a front view one is a side and I'm just going to slightly change the view here. Actually, we'll just do this. I'm going to right click and hit S5. One second, let me go into solid mode. S5 again. I don't. I, I basically want this to go all the way, so let's go back into rendered here. I think that's pretty good just for now. I'm going to hit zero though to get out. I want to see about something. I'm going to select that. And playing around with these a little bit. I'm going to take another light real quick. I'm going to duplicate it, hit on X, and then come over here, and then hit G. Well, now we can just take it over here. R Z come move it around hit R again all right so just, just so, kind of so it's facing that I'm gonna see if that affected anything made it a little bit lighter over here I'm gonna right click on this Yeah, that's fine right there, I think. All right, so I uh, another thing I'm going to do is right-click on, um, yeah, we're in three. This will render smoother because we changed that to four. All right, so let's go back to our camera view, and I'm going to render this view right here. So let's go back to render and hit render. I'll pause this, and I will unpause prematurely because I want to push everything down or, or rather bring the uh, plane up. So I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to go to solid view, select on our plane, and temporarily and just right there. All right. Let's go back to rendered here. All right. Now I'm going to hit render. Let's see what that edge. Okay, that looks much better. All right, so I'll pause it here. And you guys are going to kill me again because I'm pausing. <laughs> oh, I made a mistake over there. I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to select this. I forgot. This is not a part of that. So we have to go back here. Sorry about that. Change that to four. I am an idiot. Okay. Render again. Maybe the third time, you know, we'll get lucky here. Pause. Okay. So I'm going to save that. F3. Phone. Why do you keep on calling it a phone? It's not a phone. Oh well, uh, phone side view, and make sure JPGs down here. Save, and then we're gonna get a top view. I'm gonna escape. We're gonna hit seven. Let's see here. Yeah, I keep doing that to myself. I have to go back to camera view and do this. There we go. Now, because our resolution is big, I kind of wanted to make sure that, yeah, this is, there's a lot of space around here. And you'll kind of realize once we get to uh, After Effects, 
We want a lot of room so we can kind of scale in slightly. All right, so let me hit um, rendered view. Okay, I'm going to go with that. We'll hit render. And I'll pause. All right, uh, there's a, an issue here. You can see how everything has this, I think it's called anisotropic or whatever, um, kind of like a radial gradient thing. It has it on this and this. And that doesn't look quite correct. And I know uh, typically on um, oops, a actual, like this metal part, I know it doesn't really have that on a an actual, you know, if you were to hold one in your hand. Uh, but for this one right here, I kind of want to change that just for this view. Uh, we're not going to have any other views, so I'm going to hit escape out of there. And I'm just going to zoom up here. And I'm going to right click it, to make sure it's selected. And a way to fix that is, to, let's go back to rendered, is to go to a mix shader, add diffuse, and then add that right there. And let's take these down a notch uh, in terms of color. And then you can kind of push it towards 0.28 and take that down a little bit. Now it looks better. I think that'll look better for our final render. All right, right there. Render and pause. Okay, hit F3 and save this. Phone, I mean, it's not a phone. We'll do top view. And take this to JPG. Save. Okay. So now I've switched to Photoshop and I've opened up those three images. So basically, I kind of want to get an idea of, you know, what this interface will look like for our animation. So if I zoom up just to right around here, and also you can notice, like, <laughs> it kind of looks like, I don't know, like, there's a, uh, it's kind of beveled right here. So if you wanted to go back into Photoshop, you could adjust that. Um, by flattening it that down or removing the inner edges and then filling it back in. But I'm not gonna really do that. I'm not too worried at this point. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just get a rough idea of what we want the interface to kind of look like. And then we'll take that and kind of recreate it in After Effects. So uh, right off the bat, I'm gonna hit Control. Let me zoom out real quick. Oops. I'm going to take everything, Control A, Control C, and then just, well, wait one second. File new layer, and I'm just gonna paste it into here. And let me zoom out one more time. Hit Control T. There. I didn't have a perfect angle on that. One issue that I just realized, you know, this because we changed this, it's not going to look like. Where is it at? Yeah, it's actually pretty close. So it's not a big deal. All right, so the interface. What basically I wanted to do is have we're going to have like a little like a power icon or a status icon right here. So I'm going to hold Shift and drag out right around there. Hit Control H twice to get rid of that view, and then I'll just come over here to the direct selection tool, take the fill, make it a gradient, make it radial. Actually, you know what? A much quicker way of doing this. Let me delete that. I'm going to take the paintbrush. Yeah, right around there. And we'll make this a green color. Hit okay. 
All right, just like that. That's fine. And then I want to have like a circular like percentage uh, radio bar type thing. So what we'll do is go ahead and take the ellipse tool, hold shift, and it will be roughly this size. We'll get rid of the fill there. Change this. Yeah, right around there roughly. All right, and let's click out of there. And then we can create a new layer, Control Shift N, use a clipping mask. Take the pen tool, make sure shape is selected. Make this black. Hold Shift and create two points right here in the middle. Come down and connect it. Control H. And then in the middle, 0.74, Control T. And I'm using Source Sans Pro. It's available for free. You can just use Google to find that. We're going to just do this. All right. And I want to make those a little bit closer. Those so we go to, or we can go over here just go to maybe zero or maybe negative 25 that's better and we will duplicate this that text control shift and D scale this down control T hold shift all right select move tool it apply BAC as in blood alcohol content oh I didn't get rid of that period Control T, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Hit apply. And maybe we'll change it from extra light to light. Change this to a bluish color right around there. And then I think we'll go ahead down here. Yeah, we'll go ahead and type good to drive. Scale it down. We'll take uh, this color. Actually, I don't like that blue color. It doesn't, doesn't fit. So, could just make it white. So the idea is to have this animate once we have it in After Effects to this point and then do a red variation as well. All right, so now that we have our images saved and we have an idea of what we want the interface to look like, uh, tomorrow we can go into After Effects and then recreate uh, this and make it look really cool and animate it. Uh, and then after that, of course, we'll deal with the web design. All right, so I'm Gary Simon. I will see you tomorrow. Also, as always, I, sometimes I forget to say this. Please check out designcourse.com if you like this tutorial. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, and we're going to be having paid courses uh, for a variety of topics shortly. Um, and they may be up depending on when you're watching this. So check out designcourse.com. All right, goodbye.